In this one, we're going to rig this skeleton character that we made a few videos ago. Rigging is a topic that I'm still learning about and trying to get better at, so what I'm showing you isn't necessarily the absolute best way, it's just how I've been doing it. And as I learn better rigging techniques, I'll make more videos to bring everybody up to speed. So subscribe if you don't want to miss anything. Also, check my Patreon for all the project files from my videos, coupon codes for free Gumroad products, and a bunch of other files that I don't share anywhere else. I also donate some of the profits to environmental causes each month. Link is in the description. Here's a summary of what we'll cover. We'll start by adding in an armature and placing all of the deforming bones, making sure the axes are pointing the right way and that they have proper names. Then we'll go through and make all the bones we need for inverse kinematics and controlling our rig. We'll also talk about how to use drivers to make switches that let you turn the IK on and off. Then we'll parent everything up and do a small amount of weight painting until everything deforms correctly. All right, let's get started. Here we are in Blender. I'm using version 2.93. And we have our skeleton from the previous video right here. We're just going to get started with the armature. Hit shift A to add in an armature right here. Usually I like to go over here to object data properties. You can go over to viewport display and turn on uh, in front. I like to turn the names on and the axes also. So then you can tab into edit mode. This one I'm going to start with the hip. So I'll bring that up right here, just so it's kind of covering the hip bones right there. You can also look from the side and go into x-ray mode with alt Z just to see through your model. So I'll drag the head over to kind of like the base of the hips and this over to like where the spine is starting. Then I'll extrude this up the spine and I'll have one bone that's for the ribs right here and then one for the neck. This one will be for the head. And then for the legs, I'm going to just duplicate this bone right here. You can see it's already parented to our hip bone right here. And so I'll put this right there bring this down to the knee, and eventually we're going to change all the axes and spin these around, so don't worry too much about which way they're pointing, and just try to get them into the right position. You can check from the side. Yeah, we need to line this up a little better over here. And for this, I'm only focusing on this one side right here, which is the it's going to be the left side of our character, the right side of our screen. We'll extrude this for the foot down to right there. We're going to have a, a spot in the middle where the foot bends a little. And I want this to be following that toe right there. So the way I like to do this is by hitting period and changing the pivot point to active element. Then you can select this front one and then the back one. And this one is active right now. And when you rotate it, you can see it's rotating from that head right there. You can look from the top and just kind of line it up. Actually, one thing that might be better is just delete this bone right here and then bring this to the tip and then you can right click it and subdivide it like that. Then all you have to do is select this bone and you can change the length. When you hit N to open up the side panel right here, you can change the length of it like that. And I'll switch back to median point for the pivot point now. So now we can work on the arms. So from right here, I'll just extrude for a, uh, a collarbone. Move that over here so it's kind of in the center. Then I'm going to extrude a bone right here, but I want to disconnect it. So I'll select it, hit Alt P and uh, disconnect bone. So you can see it's disconnected, but it's still parented. That's what this dotted line is. We can line this up for the arm now. So I'll place that here, right at the shoulder, right there. Extrude this out towards the wrist. I want to make sure that's actually in the right spot. It looks like it is not. And I want there to be a very slight bend in these. That'll help us with uh, our rig later. Extrude this out. This is just going to be for the hand, just controlling this little spot right there. And then we'll uh, extrude again. And I'm just going to disconnect this with Alt-P. And then we can move this, grab the tail, and put that towards the tip of the finger. And we can basically just duplicate this over for each finger like that and just line them up. So you can just select these, right-click, subdivide. And then you'll see a little box down here where you can change the number of cuts. So normally I would set this to two, but I'm actually going to set it to three. And then when I pose the fingers, I'll only pose the top three, but you can add as many cuts as you want. I'll do the same thing for this, right click, subdivide, and instead of three cuts, I'll add two. We can add some for our eyes too. So you can tab out of edit mode, go back into object mode, and select the eyes. Go into edit mode, and I'll just select this one eye. You can just hover over it and hit L and then shift S cursor to selected. So it'll snap to the very center right there. You can go back to your rig right here and hit shift A and it'll spawn that bone right 
where the cursor is. Then I'll select that bone and hit period to change the pivot point to active element. And we can just rotate this by negative 90 degrees like that. And we can also scale it down to whatever size we want. I usually like to scale it so it's just poking out of the eye a little. So next I'm going to position the axes where I want them. And basically I like to choose kind of like a primary axis that I rotate the bones on most often. And for me, I like to use the X axis. For instance, when we rotate the spine, we want it to bend going this way. And it looks like the X axis is already positioned that way. And to edit them, you can hit N to open up the side panel over here. You just want to select your bone and uh, change this roll. And if you want to rotate multiple bones at the same time, you can shift select them. And before you change the roll, you have to hold Alt. And you can see now it's rotating multiple bones like that. So these two I also want to rotate. So just select both of those, hold Alt, and then we can turn those until the X is pointing at us. The hand bone, I think I want it to rotate going this way. So it looks like the X is pretty close. We'll see if we can tweak that at all. That looks pretty good. I'll have the Z pointing at us. And we'll just do the same thing for the fingers. So it looks like they're already pretty close. Um, I do want the X pointing this way so that when they curl on the X, they're curling like that. So I'll just rotate these until they're pointing at us. And to select a whole bunch, I like to hit C to circle select. And you can use your scroll wheel to change the size. Just select as many as you want, kind of like, like a brush. And when you're done, you can just right click. So we'll just go through and rotate all of these until they look good. What's going on here? I must have messed this up at some point. So these definitely need to be moved a little. One thing you can do is check from the top and see which direction these are pointing. Because the foot is kind of at an angle, uh, one thing you can do is rotate these so that the, the Z is pointing towards the toe, maybe right around there. It's hard to hard to get it right, but this is something you can always change later. So if it's not looking good, you can always just adjust it. And the foot, I want the X to be pretty flat going this way. So I'll just grab both of these and make it so the X is sideways and the Z is pointing up. And we can test this out by uh, going into pose mode. You can do that up here. And to test it, you can just select a bone, hit R and then X twice and see if it rotates the way you want it to. So these are looking pretty good. You can do the same thing for the fingers. So I'll just select all of these fingers right here. I'm not selecting the first one right there. And I'll change the pivot point to origins. And now when you hit R and X twice, they kind of curl like that instead of moving in one solid chunk. So you can see when I move that on the X, it's moving the way you would expect a hand to move. So with the axes all set up, I'm just gonna run through and start naming all of the bones. So this will be hips, spine one, spine two, neck, head, There is an add-on that I like to use for renaming big groups of bones like this. It's called the Simple Renaming Panel, and it's free. I'll put a link in the description. But basically, I just change this target to bone, and then you can select all of the bones you want to change. And so I'll just rename them all finger. And when you hit Replace Names and have Only Selected right here, it'll just change all of these like that. So now we have finger 001, 002. If I wanted to be more organized, you could just have like thumb and then like thumb one, two, three, uh, index or finger one, finger two, finger three, have it numerated that way. Now that we have all these named, I want to make sure that everything on this side has a dot L at the end. And this will allow us to do cool things like mirror poses and flip poses and stuff like that. So an easy way to do that is just select everything, right click, names, auto name left and right like that. And you can see it put a dot L on everything that is on the left side. It looks like some of the things in the middle also have a dot L. So I'm just gonna press control Z. For this, you wanna make sure that your 3D cursor is in the center. So shift S, cursor world, world origin like that. We can change our pivot point to 3D cursor now. Select everything that's in the middle. In edit mode, hit S to scale, X, and then zero. And if any of these bones that are supposed to be in the middle are not in the middle, that will just pull them towards the center and make them perfectly in the middle. 
So now hopefully if we select everything, right click, go to names, auto name left and right, you can see everything in the center won't have a .l appended to it, which is just what we want. Now that we have these named correctly, we can start making control bones that'll make controlling our, uh, our armature just a lot easier. So the first bone I'll add is a root bone, and this is what all of our bones are going to be parented to. Um, it'll allow us to move our entire character if we want. So you can hit Shift A to add in a new bone. I'll switch the pivot point back to active element. I'll rotate that on the X by 90 degrees, and I just want the Z to be pointing up. I just like it to match our, our like world's direction. And I'll just scale that down a little so it's not massive. We can rename that root. And let's just parent our hips to that, because right now our hips are at like the very top of the chain. It's like the biggest parent in our armature. So we'll just parent that to the root. Control P, keep offset. Now let's start setting up the IK for the arm. So right now we have FK, which means if we want to move the hand, we have to move the bicep first and then the forearm like that. IK will allow us to move these two bones by moving the hand. It's kind of like a way of letting a child control their parents. Back in edit mode, we can just duplicate the hand bone right here, and then I want to scale it up a little, or you can just change the length over here. And this is going to be our IK bone for our arm, so I'll rename that IK.arm.l at the end too, so that Blender knows it's on the left side. And we want to hit Alt P and clear the parent because we don't want it to be connected to anything over here. It'll just kind of mess things up when we start to add constraints. And we also need a target bone, and this will let the rig know which way we want the elbow to be pointing. In this case, we want the elbow to be pointing down when it bends. So I'll just select this right here and E to extrude and extrude that down on the Z. For this, I'll also hit Alt P and clear parent and we'll just drag it down a little like that. I'll rename that target.arm.l. One thing we didn't do is name our armature, so I'll just rename this uh, armature Skelly. So let's set up the IK now. We just have to go into pose mode up here. We can select the IK bone we just created, and then shift select the forearm, and you can come over here to Bone Constraint Properties and add in the inverse kinematics constraint like that, or you can use the shortcut shift I like that. So now when we move the IK controller for our arm, um, you can see it's moving like all of our other bones. And that's because we have the chain length set to zero. So we just need to change this to two. And then it will move these two bones right here. And it is looking pretty good. But we still need to set the pull target. So select that, choose the armature, then select the bone, which I named target. And now it flipped around. So we have to rotate the pull angle right here and just rotate that. I think that should be negative 90. And we can test it out again to see. We can test it out again to see if it worked. It looks like it's bending in the right direction. So if yours isn't bending in the right direction, it might be because you need to point the elbow in edit mode towards the target. If it's not pointed the right way, it won't bend the right way like that. So you just need to come into edit mode and just pull this very slightly until it's pointing towards the target. It doesn't have to be a severe bend, it just can't be straight or pointing in the wrong direction, basically. Another thing I like to do is select the hand bone, come over to bone constraints, and make sure you're using bone constraints because there's this other constraint tab. Uh, if you're choosing things from there, it's not going to work right. Under bone constraints, add uh, copy rotation, select your armature, then you can select uh, IK arm, like that. And now when we move the uh, IK controller for our arm, you can see the hand bone will also rotate. And that's kind of nice because now we don't have to move two bones around, we can just use one. That'll also help for uh, if you're trying to make your character do like a push up or something like that, you don't want their hands moving around and this will help the hands uh, stay in place. Okay, so next we're gonna add some controllers to the feet and this is gonna be a little more complicated than the hand. And if you want a more in-depth tutorial about this, I already made one about foot rigging, and you can go check that out if you want some more details. We need to be in edit mode. I'll start off with the target, so we can extrude from the knee. I'll just do that on the Y axis. And you want to Alt-P, clear the parent, and we can pull this out. I want to reset the roll just to keep it neat. And I'll rename that target.leg.l. And I want this to be kind of at like the tip of our toe because that's where we want our knee bending towards. 
I also want to add an IK bone. I want it to be the same exact orientation as this bone right here. So I'll just duplicate that bone and then we can change the length to make it a little bigger so it's easier to select. And I also want to clear the parent with Alt P and I'll rename that IK.leg.L. So the reason this is gonna be a little more complex than the arm is because I want the foot to be able to pivot from this point right here. I also want to be able to pivot from the toe and from the heel. So we need to add bones for each of those. So I'll just select this, this joint right here and extrude that on the Z. I'll extrude one from the toe and we can hit Shift A to add one for the heel. I'm just gonna change the active element and rotate this negative 90. And I just want to place the thick part, the head, at the heel right here and make sure that it's actually on the heel. And I'll check it from the top because I want to make sure that it's pointing in the direction of our foot. So I'll just make it way bigger and then rotate it until it's kind of aligned. And then we can scale it back down. Now we know it's pointing in the right direction. Okay, so we have all of these bones. We just need to make sure that none of them are parented because if they're parented to any of these bones that we extruded them from, it's not going to work right. And I can rename them. So this one I'll rename something like pivotfoot.l. And there are probably better naming conventions to use than these ones, but this is what I've been using lately. I'll rename this one pivottoe.l, pivotheel.l. Now we can go into pose mode and start setting things up. I'll select that IK bone, the IK for the foot. Shift select this, shift I and IK to active bone. Now we'll set the chain length to two and we'll test it out to see if it's working. So it does look like it's moving, but we need to set up the target. So select your armature and then we can search target leg like that. And once again, we need to rotate this. So I'll just rotate this until it's pointing towards the toe right here, which is 90 degrees. Test it out again, to see how it's working. It seems like it's pretty good. If it's not, you can just go into edit mode and move this slightly and just, you know, compare it. And if you want to reset your bone location and all that, you can just select everything with A, Alt G to reset the location and Alt R to reset the rotation. So now we can actually parent these bones up down here to make sure that it's like pivoting correctly. Back in edit mode, what we want to do is parent the IK bone that we have selected right here to this pivot bone right here with keep offset. And we're basically just going to parent it down the chain like that. And then we'll parent the toe to the heel. We're basically going to be controlling our foot movement from our heel. Select this bone, then select the pivot toe and control P, keep offset and parent the toe to the heel. It's still not working correctly. And that's because we want the rotation of our foot bone right here to match the rotation of the IK controller. So we can add a constraint just like we did for the hand. Just select your foot bone, come over to bone constraints, copy rotation, armature, and this one is named IK leg. So IK leg L like that. And now you can see that the foot is actually pivoting from that point right there, but we need the toe to continue to point at the pivot toe right there. So there is kind of an easy trick for this and it's using an IK constraint. When you have an IK chain set to just one, it basically just makes it so that one bone is pointing directly at another. You can see that when I move this, it's just the calf pointing directly towards the IK controller right here. All we have to do is select the pivot bone, shift select the toe, shift I, and to active bone, and just make sure the chain length is one. And now when we rotate this, you can see that this is pointing towards the toe still like that. And when we rotate this, the whole foot is pivoting from the toe because this is the biggest parent in the chain. We can also pivot from the heel. And also because this is the biggest parent in the chain, when you move your foot, you want to make sure that you're moving it with the heel. Um, and if you want to make this easier to remember, you can just come over to the pivot bone and turn off location like that so that when you try to move it, it doesn't work. You can just do that for all the bones that you shouldn't move. The only bone that it allows you to move is the heel bone right there. Another thing that I like to do actually is parent the target to the heel. And that way when we rotate from the heel, you can see that it like follows, the target bone actually follows the foot. Another thing that I like to do is make it so that when I move the hips, the, uh, the head doesn't rotate. 
So we can add another IK bone up here. So I'll just go back into edit mode and duplicate this and then make it slightly taller like that. I will hit Alt P, clear the parent, and we can just rename this IK.spine. And back in pose mode, with that selected, we'll shift select our neck, shift I, and IK to active bone. I want the chain to be controlling everything going down, but not the hips. So I think that would be three. So that is looking good. If we set it too high, it yeah, it doesn't work right. So we had it right with three. And then we can do the same thing we did with our hand, where we select the head bone right here and add a copy rotation and make sure that it's copying the rotation of that IK controller, which is called IK spine. So now we can move things with this and the head will stay and it'll also allow us to move our hips up and keep our head in the same place too, instead of moving all over the place. So the reason we made the root bone is so that when we move it, all of the other bones will follow and you can see not all of them are parented. So we can just select all of the bones that aren't parented in edit mode. So I'll just move all of the bones over here and then uh, select all of these bones that aren't parented. And then back in edit mode, we can just shift select the root, control P and keep offset. So now all of those stray bones are parented to the root. I want the eye to be parented to the head so that when the head rotates, so does the eye. When we move this, yeah, everything follows, which is good. So if you want to be able to turn off the IK or the copy rotation for anything, you can basically just select the bone with the constraint on it and change this influence right here. It'll just kind of snap back like that. It'll snap back to its normal position and not recognize the IK constraint. But if you're posing your character and you're in the middle of an animation and you want to switch between them, it can be kind of annoying to come over to here and find all of the sliders. So a thing we can do is create controller bones that basically change this influence for us. We can do that with drivers. I'll just come in here to edit mode and create a bone up here. You can scale that down. So I'll rename this switch.ik.arm.l. <laughs> it's kind of long. And I want the roll to be zero. And we can make sure that this is parented to the root also. So now just select the bone with the IK constraint on it. And over here, right click and add driver. And for the object, we want to select the armature. And then we want to select the bone, which we named switch. So basically what this is saying now is that when we move our switch bone in the X location in the world space, the influence is going to be the same number. So I don't want this to be in the world space. I want this to be in the local space. You know, right now in local space, this is zero. I know that because if I press Alt G, nothing happens. You can see if I move it over here, the location changes. And when I hit Alt G, it goes back to zero. This is the local location. And I want this to move down on the Y, the Y location. So I know that when I come in here, I can right click, edit driver, I'm going to set this to Y location in the local space right here. So now you can see the more I move it down, the more it turns off. But I don't want to have to move it this much. Once again, right click, edit driver. We can change this expression up here to something like times 10. That seems like a good distance. And if we want, we can make it so it's like not moving all over the place by adding a constraint. So we can add a constraint over here, limit location. We can turn everything on, and again, we want this to be in the local space, and we only want it to be moving in the Y, so I want the minimum to be negative 0.1, and now it'll only move in that direction right there. I, want, I just want to change the maximum to 0.1, and the reason I chose 0.1 is because in the driver we multiplied it by 10, so over here we have to divide it by 10 for them to match up correctly, if that makes any sense. All right, so now we have a way to turn the IK on and off. But I don't like how when this is at its default position, the IK is turned off. So what I'll do in the driver is at the very end is add one, and I'll change the minimum to negative 0.1. And now when it's at its default position, this is on all the way. And when we move it down, now it's off. So that's what we wanted to do. Um, if you want, you can do the same thing for the copy rotation right here. In edit mode, I, I can just duplicate this right here. I'll just rename this something like switch.rotation.arm.l. So we can just copy the driver over here, copy driver, and then find the one with the copy rotation on it and paste the driver. And then we can edit it and change this bone right here to, what did we name it? This one right here. 
So now when we move this one, we can turn the copy rotation on and off. If you want, you can do the same thing for the head and the same thing for the legs. So you basically just have to duplicate these and rename them, paste the driver, and just make sure that the bone is different. And for the leg, I'm just gonna make it one controller for both. So I can just copy this driver and then paste it over here. So we have one switch for both the rotation and the IK of the leg. If you want, you can do the same thing with the head over here. And I'll duplicate this. And we can come over here and bring the head location down to zero for X and the tail also. And it'll snap in the middle. So we can select this bone now and paste that driver, edit it, and make sure that it's using the right bone. And we'll do the same thing for this one right here. Copy the driver and paste it over for the copy rotation. So now we have one controller for the IK and the rotation of the head. So now I'm just going to come over here and turn off the names and the axes. And if you want, you can also change the display to a different type, like stick or something that's not as like cluttered. What I like to do is B bone. Then you can just select all of these bones in edit mode. And I think it's, I want to say it's control alt S. Yeah, control alt S lets you scale the B bones. Um, and if you don't remember that, you can just hit F3 and search for scale and find scale B bone right there. Control alt S and scale them down to whatever size you want. I usually like to keep them pretty small. And you can select ones that are overlapping like this. So I can select this one and scale it up with Control alt s So now it's a little easier to grab this bone right here. Select this bone up here, Control alt s And you can actually just hit X to scale it only on the X-axis, like that. So now we can easily grab both bones like that. You can do the same thing for any bones that are overlapping that you want to be able to grab more easily. Another thing we need to do is run through and make sure that all of the bones that we don't want to be deforming our mesh aren't deforming it. So you can see when you select a bone right here and then go over to bone properties, we have this little checkbox that says deform. We know that's a deforming bone. For instance, we don't want our root bone to be deforming. So if we select that, we can just turn off deform right here. But what I like to do is try to select all of the bones, shift select all of the bones, and when you come over here, if you hold Alt first, it will turn off deforming for all of the bones that you have selected. So we can just run through and do that for all of the bones that we don't want to be deforming. So any of the control bones, any of the IK bones, we can do that for our heel bone too. Another thing we can do is add bones to certain layers to make it not as cluttered. So you can do that by coming over here to Object Data Properties, the little running person. And you can see we have layers over here. And when you click on a square, it's going to, you know, your bones are going to disappear. That's because all of our bones are on this one layer right here. If you want to show multiple layers, you can just shift select these squares like that. So what I like to do is put all of my controlling bones that I use regularly on one layer, and then all of the deforming bones and things that I don't use as often on other layers. For instance, one bone that we're never going to use anymore is the IK bone for our foot. So we don't really want to rotate it ever because now we have this bone right here that allows our foot to pivot from that spot in the middle. So you can just select that bone, hit M to move, and I'll just put it over here. So I'll just put all the bones that I don't want to use pretty much ever just over here. Then I can select everything and move that to the second layer. And now I'll just select the control bones that I want to be using most often and put them on the first layer. M to move and just move them to the first layer. So I'll just do that for the rest. These two bones, the head bones, I'll grab the eye and the hips. So these are the bones that we're going to be using most often to control things. And if we want to do something like move our hand bones, then we can come over to the second layer. This is totally preferential. I usually just split things up between two main layers. If you want, you can totally make way more layers. And now we're ready to flip everything to the other side. Um, so what you want to do is make sure you select all, all of the layers that you just made. You can just shift select those. You want to go into edit mode, select everything, and then right click and symmetrize. And basically everything that had a dot L is going to be flipped to the other side. And we can test things out to see if they work correctly. But because we did all of the constraints, control bones and all that, everything should be working correctly if we did it right. Sometimes you might have to come in here and move the, the pole angle. Had situations where the pole angle will be wrong when we flip it to the other side. So it's a good idea to check these things out, make sure that they work. You also have to come in here and 
uh, replace all of the drivers because the drivers don't actually flip. So that's kind of annoying, but it's not too bad. You can basically just copy all the drivers from this side, you can paste them over here, and then you just need to edit the driver so that it's using the dot R instead. So I'll just run through and do that for everything. And because we named things correctly, you should be able to move bones on one side and then hit control C and control shift V. And that will uh, mirror the pose from one side to the other like that. If you select all of your bones, you have an asymmetrical pose, select all of them, hit control C and control shift V also to basically just flip it to the other side like that. And that comes in handy a lot when you, uh, when you start animating. But I'm sure you noticed that this isn't actually parented to our skeleton, so we have to do that next. So we can go back into object mode. We can select our body and control shift select the armature and hit control P. And normally I would use automatic weights, but you can see when we do that it gives us this error right here. And I think that is because we have a lot of overlapping objects in here, and Blender doesn't really know how to treat them. But that's okay, because we're going to use a slightly different method for this anyway. So I'm just going to hit Control z to make sure that I'm undoing the parenting action that I did. Instead, we're going to hit Control shift p and choose with empty groups. And we'll do the same thing for the eyes and for the head. So I'll just shift select both of those, and then the, the armature, Control p with empty groups. And now when you select your body and go over here to Object Data Properties, you can see we have a vertex group for every deforming bone. So remember when we went through and were unchecking the deform button for all of those bones? Basically, there won't be any vertex groups for any of those bones. So that's why we did that. Now, a thing that we can do, come into edit mode. When you hover over an object and hit L, it'll select that whole piece. Basically, what you want to do is make sure weight is all the way up. Select the bone. It might be a little easier if you select your armature and turn on names right here so you can actually see what names everything is. You want to go into edit mode. So you just want to select your bone over here and then you can just hit assign. And now you can see when we are in pose mode, now our hips are attached like that. And so this method is okay to do with the skeleton because we have a lot of disconnected pieces and we don't really need, you know, I'm not going to try to make these bones bend. I just want them to follow each bone that they're associated with. So for bones that you want to bend, um, like the spine right here, there I have a different method for treating those. Select your armature, go into pose mode, and then go under edit and turn off lock object modes right here. You can select your body over here and go into weight paint mode. So I'm doing that with control tab weight paint right here. And this will let you select bones with control and left click like that. You can also um, shift select to get multiple bones over here. So basically just select all of the bones you want to use. So for this I'm just selecting all of the spine bones. Uh, and then under weights you can do assign automatic from bones. And then we can move things around to test them out. So it might be hard to see with all these names floating around, but you can see now that the spine is actually moving. And it grabbed onto to a few other things that we have to clean up. Basically, I I'm going to do this for any part that I want to bend. I'm going to ignore the toes, and I'll come back to that later. But you can do the same thing for your fingers over here. So you can just select all of your fingers. And I'll come over to the other side and also shift select all of the fingers over here. And do the same thing. Come up to weights, assign automatic from bones. And once again, if we're in individual origins, we can check to see if those look good. And it seems like it looks fine. Um, but again, we're going to have to clean some stuff up first, like the hand bones right there. So that's why I like to do the automatic weights first, and then we can uh, clean things up after. Now that we have that taken care of, we can turn lock object modes back on. And I'll just go into object mode, select our mesh, and go into edit mode. And we can continue doing things the way that we were doing them before. So let's see what we have to clean up over here. It looks like it's pulling some points from our collarbone right here, so we can clean that up. And we can also clean the ribs up too. So back in edit mode, I'll select the ribs right here, just select the ribs and the collarbone. For spine one right here, I just want to make sure again that weight is all the way up and we can just hit remove like that. And basically everything we have selected um, will be removed from this bone right here. So I'll do the same thing for spine two, just remove and I'll remove for the neck also. Yeah, now you can see that only the spine is following. So I'll select the ribs and I'm just going to parent all of that to spine two. 
assign, and I'll select this shoulder right here, this collarbone, assign that to shoulder.l. So if you want to search, you can hit this little arrow right here and just, just type in shoulder.l like that, assign. We can do the same thing over here for dot r like that. And every once in a while, you can go back and move things around to see if they're working properly, and it looks like they are. So now I'll just run through and basically do that for everything. So I'll start with bicep. Choose this bone right here, that bone. Select bicep, assign. For the forearm, I'm going to select these bones right here, assign. For the hand bone, we can select it over here and then click this arrow and remove from all groups. And that will make it so that the fingers aren't influencing it. And then we can assign it to the hand and it should work fine. You just have to do that on the other side also. So it looks like our upper body is parented just fine, except for our head. We can select our head, basically just select everything with A, and I'll just search for head, select that, and assign. Make sure the weight is set to 1. You can do the same thing for our eyes, assign. So we'll do the same thing for the legs. And I'll select this bone at the bottom too for the calf. For the foot, I'm just going to select everything down here, and I'll handle the toe a little later. And now I just want to do the other side. So it looks like everything is parented properly. So for the toes, I'm just going to select the vertex group over here for our toe bone. And I'm going to go into face select and just select the tips right here. And I'm just going to hit control plus until those expand to about this point where that pivot bone is. So select the vertex group for the foot and hit remove. And then on the toe over here, you can hit assign like that. And I'll do that to the other side also. And now you can see it's bending right there. So the deformation looks a little weird. And usually the first thing I like to do is select the mesh, go over to the modifiers, and try putting the armature modifier before the subdivision surface. And a lot of the time that smooths it out quite a bit in a way that I think looks better. Basically what it's doing is deforming everything uh, looking like this before it adds the subdivision surface modifier. So it's just deforming fewer points. We can do that for our head and for our eyes too. But it honestly doesn't matter too much because it's just going to move everything. One thing that I did is uh, I added a shape key for the hips right here so that they are flattened out a little because I was running into a problem where they were touching my ribs a lot when I was moving my, my armature around. So that's a pretty easy thing to do. Basically all you have to do is come over to shape keys and hit this button for a basis. Hit the plus button again for your first key right here. And then with the second key selected, you can just come into edit mode and make the cha changes that you want. So basically I just selected some points over here and moved them around. Then when you come over here, you can just turn that up to blend into that shape key as much as you want. So if you want to be able to control your eyes more easily, you can add in a bone for them to point at. So we can do that in edit mode. I'll just hit uh, shift A to add in a bone and I'll just move it up like this. Control Alt S to make it a little skinnier. So now this is in the very center and you can just put it as high or low as you want. I'll just put that like close to in front of the eyes. Make sure that it's not deforming. We can rename it something like control dot eyes. And I want to parent that to our root bone down here. We need to do this in pose mode. You can select the eyes and then go over here to bone constraints and add a damped track like that. And then select your armature and you want to select that bone. So I named that control dot eyes. Now we can select the other eye, shift select this, and then copy copy constraints to selected bones, like that, and that will just duplicate it over. So now when we move this, you can see that those bones are following. That will allow us to move our eyes more easily too. You can move it kind of anywhere. And if you want, you can always turn the influence down to move your eyes whatever way you want. All right, that's it for this one. Once again, the project files for all my videos can be found on Patreon. I'm planning on doing a few videos about character animation, so subscribe if you don't want to miss those. And I do read all the comments, so if you leave a suggestion, I might end up making a video about it. I'd like to thank my patrons for their support, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Have a good one.